it's uh, it's the true Lord's Prayer, the Lord's High Priestly <coughs> Prayer. We have the model prayer that the Lord taught us to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then it goes on to ask for forgiveness of sins. Of course, Jesus had no sin, didn't he? So that couldn't have been his prayer because he never had to ask for forgiveness because he was the sinless one. So that was a model prayer for us to follow. He taught us with that model prayer. But this is his actual prayer. And I think that this prayer that the Lord gives us uh, can uh, teach us an awful lot. Can teach us uh, uh, many things. Let's, let's just look at it. As we start out, it says, These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son may also glorify thee. Lift up thine eyes. You know, uh, the, the psalmist said, Lift up thine eyes to the hills from whence comest thou help. Uh, thy help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. And many times in the scriptures, in fact, I looked at a number of scriptures yesterday that talked about how we, we lift up our eyes to God. I love the clouds. My uh, my wife mentioned to me a couple of times as we were riding in the car just in the last uh, a couple of days after the of course when it's all rainy out and it, you can't see the sky. But there've been some beautiful clouds lately. I love the beautiful clouds. My wife does also, and she made comment to me a couple of times, and I make comments often. I've got if you saw the the pictures I have on my uh, uh, on my cell phone, uh, many of the pictures on my cell phone are of clouds. I'll stop as I'm going over the bridge, uh, uh, over the high-rise bridge, you know, either the the, uh, the International Speedway Bridge or the Dunlawton Bridge. Uh, I'll, I'll stop on the top sometimes and take pictures of, of the clouds and the majesty of heaven. Yeah. And you, you can't make a picture like that. That's something that is real, <laughs> and uh, and I love it. But, uh, but the Lord's there, uh, uh, there in the third heaven. And they say, those that are smarter than I, say that it's in the north, so evidently it's over that way. I guess I'm facing west, east is behind me, north is to my right, and uh, south is, is, is to my left. But he lifted up his head back to his heavenly Father. Uh, the, Father, the hour has come, glorify thy Son, that thy Son may also glorify thee. And as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life unto as many as thou hast given him. Given power over all flesh and given eternal life. You see, eternal life is in the person of Jesus Christ. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Amen. Aren't you glad that, that, that that's what he, eternal life is all wrapped up in Jesus Christ? It's not wrapped up in you being a good church member or being baptized or being confirmed or, or uh, following some kind of religious uh, whatever. Uh, but salvation, uh, He is eternal life. Jesus Christ is eternal life. Of course, as we looked at a few days back, just in chapter 14, John 14, 6, Jesus saith, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father uh, uh, but by me. Uh, so what a wonderful truth that is. And we go on uh, and in verse number 3, that they might know uh, thee and the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. The only true God. See, there's a true God. We, we have, a, I was, uh, I'm on a, a, a live talk show on uh, Goliath Radio, 1380 AM. If you care to tune in on that and listen to it, you can hear it. Call in, you can make your comments or whatever. But um, <coughs> this, this last week uh, when we were on there, uh, the... Uh, the guy that owns a radio station and, and has the uh, has the talk show. His name is Big John. He used to be a politician here in Daytona Beach, and now he owns that radio station. He's quite involved in politics. He knows a lot about politics, really local politics. If you want to know something about local politics? He's the guy to ask. He 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 knows a lot about it. But but he always brings it out, and and uh, and he brings some. You know, he he likes to bring some things out that are a little controversial. He says, "Well, Pastor Varga, he believes." That the only way you can be saved is through Jesus Christ. Is that is that right, Pastor Barker? Does that mean that that all the Muslims and all the Buddhists and and all the Hindus and all the other religions that they're all going to hell? See, he likes to get controversial, and and he said that, and and I says, well, uh, 
salvation or going to heaven is exclusively for those that believe in Jesus Christ. You can name whoever you want or whatever, but Jesus saith, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And the Bible constantly, so I am what they call, and a lot of times people don't like this term. If, if you're identified, uh, many times you'll hear on the news and things, they'll say, oh, those fundamentalist Bible-believing Christians. You know, you know what a fundamentalist Bible-believing Christian is? A fundamentalist Christian is one that believes what the Bible says and practices what it says. He has a foundation, and he's a fundamental Bible believer that he reads the Bible. So if the, if the, if the Bible says uh, that Jesus is the only way and you must believe in him to be saved, that's what I'm taking. Now, John's not saved. doesn't claim to be a Christian. Uh, he, he likes me because I care about homeless people and, and have a rescue mission. He likes that, and that's why he has me on there. And he's gonna, He says, he's publicly said on the radio and in public, he says, oh, Varga, they got the, at their mission, they got the best food in town, they treat people good and all that kind of thing. And that's good, and, 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 uh, and, and I'm glad for that. But he's got enough sense to see, here's Varga, fundamentalist Christian, and here's Renee, uh, Greek Orthodox, doesn't believe she needs to be born again. She says it openly. I'm not degrading her, but she doesn't, she doesn't need to be born again. Then Ruth over there that claims to be born again, but doesn't want to fuss about that and let anybody get to heaven the way they want. You can't, it'd be nice if it could happen, but if you're going to be a Bible believer, you're going to have to come the Bible way or you ain't going to get there. You understand? You're going to have to come God's way. Can't come that way. Can't come through Confucius. Can't come through Muhammad. Uh, uh, you 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 can't come through anybody else. You have to come through Jesus Christ. And so it says, uh, "Whom thou hast sent." Oh, verse four. It says, "I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou givest me to do." Now, why did? Uh, what do you mean he finished his work? What what did Jesus come here for? Well, the liberal down the street, the liberals say this. Well, Pastor Varga, I believe Jesus was a good man. That's what that's what a, what they call a liberal theologian would say. I believe he was a good man. I believe he's a great religious leader, and we should follow and do the things that he did. And they believe that's Christianity. They believe in what's called the social gospel. What is the social gospel? The social gospel says feed people, clothe people, house people, do benevolent things towards people, and if you do that, uh, then. Uh, uh, that's what a Christian is. No, that, that should be done. And I think more of true Christians ought to do that. And I do it as a true Christian. I feed people and clothe them and, and do all I can to help poor people. And that's a good thing. But that's not the gospel. The gospel is Christ shed his blood for our sins. And he was buried. And he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So uh, that's what it is. So what did, you, what did Jesus, and I have finished the work. What was his work? The Bible says this Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. That was the reason. It wasn't just to be a good example. Well, of course he was a good example. He was sinless. He was perfect. How, how, how can you be perfect? I've known some Christians that have been pretty good over the years. I've known some Christians. If, if uh, uh, you'd think, well, that's kind of a perfect person. There aren't, there aren't no per only one perfect was ever walked the earth down here was Jesus Christ. And, and he's an example for us, and we should try to follow in his footsteps as Sheldon wrote in that book, uh, What Would Jesus Do? And, uh, or in his footsteps, it, it, it changed. It used to be in his footsteps years ago, and it changed What Would Jesus Do? And it was a, a, a book about a church that had a homeless man that came to their church, and he was shunned by the church, like many times churches would shun a homeless person, and he died in the shed out in the back of their church. And, and, and the, the pastor's heart was smitten by that thing. And, and, and he thought, man, Jesus wouldn't have done that man the way that we did him. And then he challenged the church to, to try to, in every activity they had, in their home and in their work and in their interactions in, out in society, to do what Jesus did. It was quite interesting because it, it, it really changed some people's lives. There was not everybody in the church decided to do it, but there were certain a number of people in the church. You can find it, it's a famous book. You can find it uh, on the internet or in the, in the library. In His Steps or What Would Jesus Do? And by Sheldon is the author. But 
we should do like he did. Amen. But 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 he is Christ Jesus came into the world to be a good example. No, to save sinners. To shed his blood on Calvary's cross and be raised from the grave. So here he was, that's what he uh, he finished his work. Uh Verse 5, Now, O Father, glorify Thou me with Thine own self, with the glory which I had with Thee before the world was, with the glory which I had. Now remember this, glory isn't something that Jesus attained. you got to remember that. It wasn't something that He earned. He had it because, what? He's God. So God has always been. You say, well, I can't quite understand that. I can't either. I don't understand the concept of a God with no beginning and no end. And, and many people, that's what, uh, uh, that's what stumps the eggheads of our, of our earth. And, and they, uh, they say, well, it just can't be that something never had a beginning and end. Because as smart as people might think, our brains can only conceive beginning and end. You've got to have a beginning. Something has to start it. But God always was, and I just accept it by faith. And, and so it was that he was going back to be with his Father. Did, did you know what Jesus did when he took the form of a man? He set aside uh, some of his garments of deity. There, 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 there were certain things when Jesus took the form of a man and came down to this earth that he set aside for the 30 to 33 years, right around in that uh, area there, he set some things aside of his deity when he walked the face of this earth <clears throat> and he became a man. And, and he was truly God and he was truly man. He was the God man. Or as the prophet Isaiah said, when uh, it said that he would be Emmanuel. The word Emmanuel means what? God with us. So anybody that does not believe uh, uh, here's a uh, here's a quick way to to figure out who's for God and who's not anybody any kind of religion whether it be a Jehovah Witness or be a Mormon or be a liberal Christian thought and by the way all of those do not believe Jesus is God <coughs> I just gotta remember that Mormons don't believe Jesus is God Jehovah Witnesses don't believe Jesus is God Liberal thinking uh, Christians do not believe Jesus is God. Anybody <coughs> that does not believe that Jesus is God, run away from them like fire. Don't get anywhere near them. Don't, don't invite them into your house. Don't wish them Godspeed. Don't say, I know some people, they waste their time. I know some says, oh, oh, I study, I study every Thursday. I study for an hour with the Jehovah Witnesses. They come into my house and we study for an hour every Thursday. I says, you're wasting your time. You got to tell them to get lost. Tell them, uh, tell them I, believe in, uh, uh, I believe in Jehovah Jesus. Amen. I got Amen. Jehovah Jesus. They've got a little Jesus. They've, uh, they've, they've brought out their Bible, the New World Bible, you know. And in John chapter 1, where it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's what the King James Bible says, the Bible. Word was God. In, in, in their New World Translation put out by the Jehovah's Witnesses. And it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. Yeah. You see? They say, they say yeah. Jesus is little God. <laughs> He's not little God. He's big God. He's Jehovah. Amen. I tell them, it's Jehovah Jesus. And I take, them to, I take them to Isaiah, and I take them to Revelation 1. And I said, Jesus says, I am the Alpha and Omega in, in, in Revelation chapter 1. He says, I'm Alpha and Omega. Now, how many beginning and ends can you have? Just one beginning and one end. Back in Isaiah, it says Jehovah is beginning and end. So if Jehovah is beginning and end, and Jesus is beginning and end, Jesus is Jehovah. Amen? Amen. So I shut him down pretty quick with that. JW's come around. I just say, oh yeah. Uh, I'm, I say, I'm a Jehovah Witness. Oh, you are? Yeah, Jehovah Jesus. That's mine. They don't buy that one too good, do they? But he's the only way. That's what they, they said. I, and, 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 and the woman called in on the talk show this past first Tuesday. And her name was Joyce. And she says, oh, Ruth, I agree with you. We got to stop arguing with one another. Oh, it sounds so good and all that, you know. And he says, we just all need to get along. 
You know, some people, she says, I think on the next, uh, our next program we have, John, would you please have them talk about love? I mean, it sounds so good, and she's just drippy, you know, and, and all of that, and then Joyce on it. This I hope they do. I, I hope I, I don't pick the subjects. John picks the subjects. I, I hope he does pick love. Amen. I hope he does, and I want to show him what real love is and what God has to say about love and, uh, and, and all of that. And I tell you what, uh, love isn't everything goes, and let's all just uh, have a group hug and sing kumbaya. That ain't love. I'm going to guarantee you that. But that's what a lot of people think. <coughs> Just say, everybody, can't we, can't we just get along? You know, it sounds so good and everything. But no, <laughs> you got to believe God. I believe God. And if God says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man cometh, then if you don't come through Jesus, you got a chance. Jesus is the light that lighteth every man cometh into the world. God's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We'll be out, and this goes out on the internet, and all of you dear ones out on the internet that are, that you know, pick this thing up. You know, the internet's a wonderful thing. I, I do these sermons. I got someone told me who was it? Lee told me. Uh, he says, "Man, you got all kinds of sermons up." And yes, I just keep putting them up there. <laughs> Maybe someone like this one, or, or someone like that. Don't cost nothing to upload them. Yeah, they can subscribe. They can, they can, yeah, and they can subscribe to my my channel if they yeah. want. And you can see it all over the world, the internet, YouTube. I don't know why more preachers don't use it. I have very few preacher friends that do that, but I don't know why they don't. But I just, I just take the picture. Hey, YouTube, here we go. And, uh, and it goes out all over the world. And uh, you can watch it. Uh, they watch it in other countries. It's it's an amazing thing. But this wonderful Jesus. So maybe maybe first Tuesday. Maybe you want to watch it next first Tuesday. And I'll give John a little advertisement. He, uh, he, he says, we've got to, uh, uh, he says, uh, uh, we have the uh, we have the distinction of being the smallest talk show format in the world. That's what he announces his program. <laughs> that means it's not a big time operation, you know. He ain't, uh, uh, he's not someone that's all over the country and millions of people listening. Well, maybe they will, but we have a good time at it. And some of you might want to listen in. Thirteen eighty, four thirty to six, first Tuesday every month. But we got talking about that, and hopefully, I hope we talk about love this next time. That's going to be interesting, because you see, the thing is, all I use when I'm on there, all I use when I preach, or all I use when I talk with people, is this right here, the Bible. Amen. Oh, the B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E, Bible. Amen. That's what we do in Sunday school. And the kids all jump up and hold their Bible up in the air. And we've lost it. We've lost the day of Sunday school. We don't teach our children anymore. It used to be the teaching arm of the church. Children would be raised up in Sunday school, and very few are. I was so glad that they would get all those poor children in Milwaukee. We picked up a 1,000 of them, sometimes 2,000, every Sunday morning and brought them into Sunday school to teach them. And I had the privilege... Just two weeks ago, I was back there to my daughter, my granddaughter's graduation, and, and I got to preach at Sean Brewster's church, mm. Haven of Rest Baptist Church on 40th and North Avenue in Milwaukee. And Sean Brewster got saved 30 years ago, 18 years old. He got saved and was trained at the mission, went to Bible college, and is pastoring the church now. And I got a chance to preach with Sean there and his assistant, uh, Cleveland Allen, who was also saved at the mission in Milwaukee. And there were, there were kids that were children in Sunday school when I was there 30 years ago. And they had their kids there in church. And, uh, and so that's a blessing. That's what it's, uh, 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 that's what it's all about, uh, to get it out to the, uh, to the poor. Uh, God loves poor people. You know how Jesus started his ministry? Luke 4.18, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, Jesus said. He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and to heal the brokenhearted and deliverance of the captives. And so, I mean, that was Jesus' statement when He started His ministry. He only had ministry three and a half years, you understand that. Didn't start till He was 30 years old when He was baptized. But He went to poor people and He was homeless Himself. The foxes have holes and the birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Oh my, isn't that wonderful? We've got such a beautiful passage of Scripture here. 
Now we go on. And it says here, uh, let's go to, uh, oh, let's go down to verse 17. We don't have time for it all, time hindering us. Verse 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. Sanctify them uh, through thy truth. Thy word is true. What's he talking about then again? The Bible. The Bible. Now, what does the word sanctify mean? The word sanctify means set apart. Now, let me tell you something about you and I as a Christian. Listen very carefully. This is where a number of you people that are sitting right here, right now, this is your big problem. You're a Christian. You've been saved. And... You're, you're in, we can't help but being in the world. We're, we're in the world. I mean, until I die, I'm in the world. Yeah. We're supposed to be in the world, but not of the world. Yeah. The problem with the vast majority of Christians is they're in the world and they're of the world. Amen. Yeah. Amen. They live like the world. They talk like the world. They drink like the world. They smoke like the world. They do dope like the world. They shack up like the world. They lie like the world and everything. I, I'll tell you how I know because George Barna that uh, he's an evangelical pollster. Uh, he's very highly acclaimed. And about a year ago, he took a poll of what we call born-again evangelical Christians, supposed to be saved people. And it says that when he took the poll, he said that those that claim to be born-again evangelical saved people, it says their moral uh, conduct and their character is exactly the same as the world. Now, is there something wrong with that? You better believe there's something wrong with it. Because it says, Jesus said, we're supposed to be sanctified. He's talking about Him going back to the Father in heaven, but He's telling uh, the, the Lord, the Heavenly Father, to set us apart. You see, we need to be set apart. Are you set apart from the world as a Christian? Or do you do, is it what the Christian, I mean, you say, well, I don't, I don't have to go to Sunday night church. I do what everyone else does on Sunday night. The world. You're talking about the world now. I'm going to watch my favorite TV program. I ain't coming to church. We're, listen, churches are about dead because I, I talked to someone. Uh, who was it? Uh, uh, just a good friend of mine, a pastor. He's not a lead pastor, but he's an associate pastor. Uh, uh, and it's at a Baptist church, and I believe they're good people. And he says, we don't have, we don't have service in the evening anymore. Just on very rare occasions, nobody will come. Isn't that sad? Isn't that sad that most churches are closed down on Sunday night and, and no midweek service? That work, ours building up. It ain't what it should be. I'd like to see Sunday night be like it is Sunday morning and Wednesday night too. Ours is coming up, but I want to still have it coming up. Uh, you know how it's going to come up? This Sunday morning service. You need to be there tonight. You need to be there for the 6 o'clock hour. You'd be glad you'd come. Uh, those that have started coming, they're glad they're coming. Got words that uh, do that silly this or that or whatever, whatever, you know. But I tell you what, you want to do better in studying the Word of God with God's people on Sunday evening, and, and you wouldn't. And some of you on the verge of it, you think you're. Uh, uh, some of you think you're doing it all by coming Sunday morning. That's better not coming at all. Amen. But you'd be better off coming back Sunday night. And you'd be better off coming back Wednesday night, and on and on. Sanctify them through Thy truth. Thy word is truth. Verse 18, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have also sent them into the world, us, the believers. And for their sake, I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Now here again, it's talking about being <coughs> sanctified through what? <coughs> through the truth. Sanctified through the truth. So that's what we have to be. And so what do you have to do? Do you have a, <coughs> do you have a Bible reading chart? Uh, we have them right on the back table. You can pick up a Bible reading chart and you can be sanctified through the truth. You can be sanctified through the teaching of God's Word. I've got, I've got a year's worth of, of sermons and CDs on the back there. We were on the radio. We're no longer on the Christian radio station. We're, we now go on YouTube every day. Every Sunday we go up on YouTube. It's a little different. And, and, uh, but uh, for everything we had on the radio last year, it's on the back table. You want to, I talked to someone. Someone came in the church today, and it says, "Oh, your CDs in the in the <clears throat> in the thrift shop." I went in there and they had the, they had your CDs in the thrift shop. But well, we have them back here. People can take them. If you want to put an offering, they can put it in the can. And uh, evidently, uh, somehow, it got into the thrift shop. And he uh, 
uh, picked up a, a, a one of the one of my CD sermons, and and so you can pick up sermon other sermons from others that are preaching the word of God, or watch some gospel preacher, or uh, or get you a Bible and get sanctified. You'll be sanctified through the truth, and the only real truth that we have. You might say, well, I'm not trying to be too rough on you. You say, but here's what I think. Let me say this: Who cares what you think? That ain't gonna, what you think ain't going to amount to a hill of beans. You know that? It's what God says. It's what God truth is. Too, too many all wrapped up in what you think. Now, if what you think came from the Bible and it's Bible truth, then amen, you got something. I'm for you. And there's, there's people around like that. But there's some people. Uh, 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 they don't think, well, I, you know what, Pastor? I know the Bible says this, but here's what I think. You know, like... I'll, I'll kind of be trying to be nice to him and shake my head and go, oh, you know. But uh, <laughs> if, if you think you're going to bring an opinion against God, forget it. Forget it. You're wasting your time. <laughs> Verse 21, that they all may be one, ah, uh, as the Father art in me and I in thee, that also they may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Now oneness in Christ. The Bible is filled with this great truth of the oneness in Christ. Uh, pastor Lamb who preaches for us and does counseling for us has uh, been a pastor for many, many years. Uh, he goes off into 1 John chapter 1. What a wonderful chapter. 1 John chapter 1. The epistle of 1 John chapter 1 where it talks about the Father and the Son and having fellowship and we can have fellowship with Him and Truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son and with one another. You see, if I fall in love with the Father and I fall in love with the Son and the Holy Spirit, listen, if I fall in love with God and I'm close to God and you fall in love with God and you're close to God, what kind of relationship are you and I going to have? We're going to be close to one another, aren't we? We're not going to argue with one another. We're not going to fight with one another. We're not going to hate one another. Amen. We're going to be for one another. Amen. And this, and several times, we don't have a chance to look at them all because time is, is running. Yes. Uh, but uh, the oneness of the, of the Christian family, of, of, the, of the family of God, of the church of God, with the Father, <laughs> with the Son. Oh, Jesus went back to heaven. He was glorified with, with, the, with the glory he had before next to the Father. The Holy Spirit is here. Have you been saved, dear one? Are you are you saved? Yes. Do you have the Lord? Yes. If you have, you know it. If you don't, you know it. You say, preacher, I'm I'm saved. I'm born again Christian. I know I'm going to heaven. If you know you go to heaven, raise your hand. Let me see. All right. Let me put your hands down. Let's bow for prayer a moment. You say, Pastor. To be honest with you, I don't know for sure I'm going to heaven, but I'm concerned about it. Would you pray for me? Would you pray for me? I'm not sure I'm going to heaven. No one looking around, just a pastor. Would you raise your hand and say, pray for me? I'm not sure. Yes, 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 yes. Are there any others? Several hands are raised. Is anyone else? Just raise your hand. A number of hands are raised. All right, you may put your hands down. Lord, I thank you for these. That's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. You need to be saved. Oh, Lord, show them their need. Show them they need to repent and turn from their sins and they can be saved even this very day. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. You say, Preacher, I, I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. You prayed for me. I know I'm not saved. I'm willing to turn.